Hello, good evening. Um, this is another tutorial, another edition of the OSA tutorials online. So we'll continue from where we stopped the last time in the last video. So in the last video, um, I introduced us to VB. Then um, I did I said one or two stuff about um, I said it was um, the first version was dropped in 1991. It was invented by Microsoft and um, Okay, I didn't tell you it was a strong, uh, it's a strong um, typed, strongly typed uh, programming language. I'll say all those now. So today we're going to be um, moving into data types in Visual Basic. So um, data types is one of the, um, pre the preliminary things you need to understand if you want to go into any programming language. And one good thing about um, programming languages is that um, there's this sort of consistency across programming languages, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Visual Basic as well. All these programming languages have, um, they've made provision for the kind of, some a, a type of data you can use to handle numeric data type, <coughs> sorry please. Then they've, they also, uh, they've made provision for the type of uh, data types you can use to handle non-numeric data. Um, Non-numeric data include um, characters, words, the two-state data type, and all that. So today we are going to be talking all data type, all data type. So um, let's get into it. So data types in Visual Basic. So in Visual Basic, data types are useful to define a type of data the variable can hold, such as an integer, a float, a string, whatever in the application that you're trying to create. So <clears throat> the application you're trying to create might be, the application you're trying to create might be something like, maybe a, it might be something like a CGPA calculator, it might be a body mass index calculator, it might be something as simple as the, the desktop calculator on Windows, something as, as basic as that. And it can go as, like I told us in the last class, as complex as a payroll system. You have to make use of variables and you have to declare all these variables in different types, depending on the kind of data you wish to store. For example, if you're trying to store somebody's name, you know you're going to be storing it as a string. Now, if you want to store like a collection of uh, maybe the products and their price, you know you're going to be saving that as a, the, the name of the product is going to be saved as a string, while the price of the product is going to be saved as a float, not an integer, because um, money is continuous, it's not discrete. If you check the, your account balance on your um, your bank's uh, statement, what you'll be getting those two uh, decimal places there, because money is continuous, it's not discrete, so please take notes. So let's get back into, um, into it. Um, Visual Basic is a strongly typed programming language. What do I mean by a strongly typed programming language? It means um, every time you declare a variable in Visual Basic, it is mandatory to define the kind of data the variable is going to store. Um, unlike some other programming languages, say Python, for example, and um, okay, I, I can even think about Python now. In Python, you can store a Boolean in a particular variable, then come back next tomorrow <laughs> and change it to an integer. So it's a um, um, weakly typed programming language. That's what you call them Python, but Visual Basic is a strongly typed programming language. And this is the reason why it's a strongly typed programming language because before performing any operation on a variable, you need to define the kind of data that variable is going to store. Let me do a bit of illustration for us so imagine that let's let's even move away from um, variables for now. Let's move away from variables. Most of us um, most of us use um, Android, iPhones. Okay, these are the two basically, Android and iPhones. So if um, the uh, memory space on your phone is say thirty two gig, and you want to download a movie, I love to watch movies. There are lots of them. So um, let me say you want to download a series, and the series is like um, two gig, and your phone's memory you have like say six gig left. You know that you are short of two gig because of the series you just downloaded. So it is taking 
the space of two gig out of the six that you have. So unless you delete it, you have you are left with only four. Sure, you get. Um, another example would be if let me try to do um some sort of illustration here. Yeah. So if I have a kitchen, if I have a kitchen, and this is the size of my kitchen, and I have a cupboard that is say this size. If it is only one of these that I have, then I can just put it anywhere. But you know that if I have two of these, let me use another color. If I have two of these, you know that the second one is going to be occupying here. Yes, I'm sorry for the curiosity of my drawing. So you can see, if it is three of these I have, then you know that I have to bring in this third one over here. Then if I have one more, I can just bring in that one more over here. Now, what is this telling you? If I have an extra one of these I want to bring in, it will not be able to get into this place because the memory is full. Like, no, not memory now. The, the, the kitchen space is full. Like, the space I have to store, um, uh, to store whatever cupboard I want to store is filled up already. So this can't come in. So that is what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to explain. Now, um, this is, but in computer terms, normally, um, this is what your memory will look like if you want to illustrate it. Let's say this, we have one byte, another byte, another byte, we have another byte, we have another byte, then another byte. So let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bytes of memory that we have over here. So if you want to, don't forget, according to elementary um, computer, we were told that a computer is an electronic machine that will accept data. After accepting the data, it will process the data. After processing the data, it will give out useful information based on the data that you are giving it already. So for the data to be processed, it has to be stored somewhere. You get, it has to be stored somewhere. And where is it going to be stored? In memory. If you have a movie you want to watch or some music you want to play on your phone, it has to be stored somewhere. It might be stored in the cloud and you're playing using maybe Spotify or Spotify or whatever, YouTube music, SoundCloud, wherever. But it has to be stored somewhere. It might be stored on your phone as well. So that's just it. So for, for the data to be processed, it has to be stored in a particular place. So um, all this data that we want to process, it will be stored in our memory. Now, all this type of data, different type of data have different memory sizes that you use to store them, be it um, a, num a numeric data type or a non-numeric uh, non data type. The memory space required to store this data, they all vary. So let's try to um, see some of them over here. So, um, okay, I also said a strongly typed programming language. Another name for it is a dynamically typed programming language. So we have um, the opposite of this is the weakly typed. Then the opposite of this is the statically typed. Let me put it inside here. Put it. So, Typed or that or statically typed. Okay, so that's it. Now, um, this is a table containing almost all the data types available in VB. We have Boolean, we have the bytes, we have the char, we have the date, the decimal, the double, the integer, the long, the object, and a lot of other stuff as well. So you now the table above shows, I, 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 I've tried to do a bit of classification here. So all this, this table above now shows the different data types that we have and the um, memory space required to, to store them. So I'll come back to this later. Let me just, um, just do, try to explain the classification and we can move forward. So, as I said, the, the table above shows all the data type, data types, their required memory sizes. Sizes, or oh, should it be size? And their range of values. So simplifying the table above, we have all this. So to store numeric data, um, data types for whole numbers, you're going to be using short, long, and integer. Now, what is the, what are, what is the difference between 
these three now. Short, long, and integer. Though all of them can be used to store, the three of them can be used to store whole numbers. What, are, what is the difference between them? If you come on to here to check um, short, you can see short over here. For you to store short, you are going to be needing two bytes. And the short data type, the range of values is from negative 32768 to 32767. So you can see the range of values over here. So if I have a variable, say maybe I declare the variable as short and um, I want to store a number, say maybe 24 in short, I'm going to be needing one and two. These two bytes are going to be required. Let me use another color. Um, so I'm going to be needing these two, these two spaces over here to store the short because it requires two bytes. Um, what if I want to uh, store, say, integer? The integer will require four bytes. So if I want to store the integer here, then I'm going to be needing one, two, three, and four. So for me to store an integer in memory, I'm going to be needing four bytes of memory to store an integer. So I think the last one is the um, long. As you can see, the long now. The, I'm going to be needing eight bytes to store a long, to store a, um, like a variable that is going to be holding a long value. I'm going to be storing it using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I think I need to draw an extra um, box over here. So, um, so I'm going to be needing all its eight boxes. I'm going to be needing all the eight bytes to store a long. So the range of values differs as well. You can see, you can use the long to store larger values. And you can see this is the, um, this is the highest value you can store with long. I can't even pronounce it because I know that um, this is 100, this is 100,000, this is 100 million, this is 100 billions, then this is um, 100 trillions. I don't know, quadrillion or so. <laughs> what? Uh, this is this is just the range of values. And as you can see for the integer too, this is the range of values. That, this, this is the range of values you can store using integers. So or, uh, even though um, the three of them can be used to store whole numbers, you can see that the range of values you can use them to store, they vary. So um, the next one, um, data for decimal numbers. You can see we have single, we have double, we have decimal. The same thing applied to them. I didn't take, I didn't add float to this table, so please add on me for that. So for single, for single, we have um four bytes, and you can see um single, you can store values as um and before we continue, please. Data types for decimal numbers. Decimal numbers are, say, floating point numbers. Like, for example, a good example of a decimal number is pi, which is 22 over 7. So this would be 3.142, blah, blah, blah. So this is the whole number part. And this is the floating point part, the decimal part. So 3.142, this is the decimal number. So this is different from, um, uh, let me say, if I have two numbers, say 2.0 and 2, both of them are not the same thing, please. This is a whole number and this, no, 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 sorry. This is a decimal number and this is a whole number, so please take note. This is a decimal number and this is a whole number. So please take note. Both of them, they are not the same thing. So if you want to store this value in Visual Basic, you are going to be using the single, the double, or the decimal to store 2.0. But if it is two that you want to store, you are going to be storing it as a short, a long, or an integer. Please take note. Please take note. So um, let's get back here. Single, double, then we have decimal. Okay, I was trying to explain that. Um, okay, this is data types for decimal numbers. So moving forward, um, you can see single, you can use it to store true maybe 38 decimal places or what? What can I see here? You can see 
38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45 decimal places for single. Um, let me see double, you can see. This is 308 decimal places, 309, 310, and all like that. So for decimal, um, this is 28, this is 28 decimal places you can store for the decimal data, the data type. So you can see, even though they are all numeric, but the range of values you can store using them, um, it differs. So you need to be careful when declaring your variables because um, even though they are all numbers, they don't work the same way. Like I said, two and 2.0 are two different values. They are not the same. You need to take note, please. Two is a whole number. 2.0 is a floating point number, or you can call it a decimal number. Sure you get. So please take note of that. So um, let's move on to let's move on to the data types for non-numeric data. Now we have a whole lot of we have other data types apart from this ones I took. Um, I'm using here. So just uh, so for alphabets, I, I I don't think I have um, strings in that uh, table. So please. For alphabets, you have character over here. So um, for alphabets, we have character. You can see char, the char data type. You can use it to store, uh, for you to store a char data, a character data, you need two bytes. You need two bytes. So if I'm going to be drawing this, if I'm going to be drawing this, let me come back to draw my mystery memory. Oh, good. That is too big. So this is just what I need. So I should try this. So this is um. So for me to store a character data type, I'm going to be needing two bytes of data, two bytes of data to store a character data type. So that is for character. Um, I didn't uh, take string into consideration. I have to do that in another video. So for a two-state data representation, you need Boolean. Um, let me do a bit of explanation for Boolean. Now, um, Boolean confuses so many people. So many people. Boolean confuses so many people, and it's quite simple. Boolean is a two-state data type. What do I mean by two-state data type? I mean, um, for example, admission, true or false, true means you are admitted. False means you are not. Um, you guys are going to be taking GST this semester. So um, GST, you can either pass or fail. So if you uh, pass is the question, true means you actually passed. If uh, false is the answer, it means you failed. So um, let me see. Is there any other example? There are so many examples that we can think of. Um, for example, you can someone might go for a paternity test. You can either be the father of a child or not. So true, you are the father. False, the dash should begin. <laughs> so you just it, it's a two-state data type, like I said. So don't get it um confused. Don't get to confuse yourself. So um two-state data representation, okay. It's Boolean, and you're going to be needing Boolean, Boolean, Boolean. Okay, it depends on the platform. Yes, it depends on the platform, the size. But in most cases, nobody is going to be asking you. Nobody is going to be asking you um, the the size you need to store a Boolean. To be honest, nobody is going to be asking you that. So let's continue, please. Let's continue. Um, I think that will be all for now. I think that will be all for now. So. For time, okay, we have the date, uh, the date, the uh, data type as well. We have the date data type as well. So you are going to be needing eight bytes to store a date data. So you can see the range of values over here. You can see the range of values over here. So well, um, I think that will be all for this video. I know this might be too much for you to uh, take in at the moment, but trust me. <laughs> It is not super complicated. If you have any questions, just use the comment section and um, or you can ask your questions in class as well. 
So um, the next video I'm going to be making for us will be on variables. I guess it's going to be a very short one. Um, variables. We I've I've, talken, I've spoken with, uh, to us about data type in this video. Like I said, data types is is it's quite it's quite important because um, if you want to if you want to make room for a particular kind of data to come in, you need to declare the type of data for VB to recognize that okay, I'm going to be reserving space in memory. So when the data comes, this is the this is the allocation in memory we are making for that data to be stored because. If there's, there's no allocation made for the data, there's no processing that is going to be taking place. Because don't forget, like I said, in elementary school, we were told that a computer is an electronic machine that will accept data first. After accepting the data, it will process the data. After processing the data, it will give out useful information. But before, before processing can occur, it needs to be stored somewhere. Hence, the data types and the variables too. In the next video, I'm going to be talking to us um, about the variable. So see you then and um, bye for now. Peace.